What's up, YouTube? You guys remember this, the wall clock? Well, this one came a little defective. As you can see, the display here is uh, kind of uh, missing some of its design here. I'm not sure how you call that, but it's fading. You see that it's missing? Some of the display is not visible. And this is actually a problem that you can encounter with actual G-Shock watches. It's kind of interesting that they happen to this wall clock because it really replicates what can happen to a G-Shock watch. So we're going to try to open up to see what's inside this actual wall clock and how we can fix it and see if it's actually fixable. If not, then I might have a project for this. So I don't mind if it breaks because I think I have something I could do with the actual wall clock that will come out pretty cool. If I can fix it, great. Then if not, then I'll salvage the parts and I'll make something pretty neat. Let's get started. Let's go. All right, so in the back, actually already did it, but let me show you guys, remove the screws. There's about, I wanna say, there's about seven screws here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven screws. You unscrew those screws, unscrew those screws. <laughs> and then you take them out. Um, they look like this, which I already did. I don't wanna waste too much time, but. You unscrew those screws and this plate pretty much comes out like this. Open it up and I'll show you what's inside of here. The batteries are in there because I want to test the um, display, LED display as I work on this. Oh man. Okay. So it opens up like this, like a lid. And then you have, you got to be careful because there's two wires, pretty simple design. You have two wires that connect getting power from the battery and then power the actual little um powers the digital board here so the digital board you can see um i'm not a i'm not a like uh some kind of a technician or any kind of um i don't know uh guru when it comes to this kind of parts or um electrical components but I do know that with G-Shocks, the way this works is that there's a display, right? You have the motherboard here um, that gets the power and um, does all the um, programming in there whatsoever. And you have the display that actually lights up and does what the motherboard tells it to do. Um, and then there's these two rubber brackets that kind of seal. Right here, you can see it. Exactly it. You can see it right there. See that? There's one here, there's usually one on the bottom. I don't see one on the bottom though. Um, you can see it there, right there, you see that? And they usually have to be seated a certain way in order for the actual component to work. If that is moved in any particular way, it doesn't make the proper contact and then you don't get that display to work. And then you have a partial display or a non-function display. I'm actually gonna do a video, I'm gonna I open up a regular um, G-Shock and I'll show you how I'll, I'll kind of reproduce or simulate that pro problem so we could correct it. Because I know there's people who have had that issue in the past and don't know how to actually fix it. But it's a pretty simple uh, method to fix it and we're going to show you guys. Temper, I'm going to play with, play with this one for now, but I'm actually going to show you how that works with real, with real G-Shock. Alright, so before I actually remove this motherboard here with a little um, component there, I want to keep an eye on it. You see how it's not, it doesn't work. So if I put pressure on the little component, metal component here, it should, I notice that it works a little better. So for example, push down on it from the back. See that? See how it lights up and I get more. So my guess um, is that this is probably loose. So I'm gonna tighten that up and see if that resolved the issue. If not, then I have to remove this, check that piece back there to make sure it's flushed and sit, it's sitting properly um, that so that it probably could correct the issue. So I'm gonna just tighten these to see if that helps cause some extra contact on the board there. But this is, it's a pretty easy concept. Um, it's not that complicated to make this. 
uh, but it's pretty neat how they did it nevertheless and this one's actually pretty no it's not stripped i thought it was stripped but let me see if that helped nope didn't help that much so i'm going to remove it now and see if i can get um if i can get that fixed so take one off take these six screws off here Like I said, I'm not no electrician. I'm not um, um, IT or or mecha uh, mechanical engineer or <laughs> computer engineer whatsoever. But I do like tampering and playing with these kind of things because you learn a little bit. I've opened up a few G shocks and trial and error. I figured out um, what the problem is with some of these components and how to fix them. Um, I've lost and damaged some in the process, but it's fun. And this is the only way you can learn, to be honest. So lift this up, you see how it's seated there so that we remember how it goes. There's little crevices here, little pins actually hold it in place. So I'm gonna pull this up. You see the board right here? This is where it's supposed to make contact with that piece there. So I'm gonna be careful that it doesn't make contact and damage it. If I remove that, this board should be off show you there there it is it's off because it's not making contact with that component all right so this piece here i think is a problem this is a this is the culprit here this piece here um i can see this little cushion there is moved so I could move this, here. this lips seems to be moved and then this piece should be making proper contact now we have all these things going on here um and this seems fine, to be honest. Okay. See, this is a little part I'm telling you. This is a critical piece of this entire design. Without this, you have flaws in your digital display. I'm going to pull this off carefully. I want to see what the display looks like. Oops, there we go. That should be... See that? Pretty simple. This is actually standard design when it comes to G-Shock watches. This is how you have the, this is the, this is kind of um, projects the image that is being um, programmed by the motherboard or the chip or whatever that thing is called and, and displays that on this glass here. So again, I'll put this back. I just wanted to show you that. Carefully put this back. You don't want to temper or touch the glass. You don't want to crack it, damage it. You don't want to, um, um, cause any damage to it but then this piece goes once again in this area here and this should be making contact with this piece now why that does it you guys tell me maybe there's somebody out there who understands it this should make con this has to make contact with this piece here and that um then transfers the <laughs> somehow magically <laughs> some hocus pocus magicry transfers the um the information over to the wall to the display so i'm gonna put this in here make sure that it's sitting seated right um it might still not work but i want to test that first without damaging it so okay that's making the proper contact there okay then i'm gonna put this back on here in its position where it was right there Okay, so I'm gonna put these screws back on here. This is trial and error. It takes a few t attempts to see if that corrects it. Sometimes just shifting it and fixing it, see, sometimes that helps. Where does this go? Okay, I see. The other three holes. And then there, okay. Okay, I see where the problem is. It's right here, right there. 
So this is, needs more pressure. Apparently it needs more pressure. So, um, see if I could tighten that one up a little bit more. Oh, well, well look at that. <laughs> a little more pressure solved it. That's all they needed. A little tender love and care. They needed a little hug. And then I'm gonna actually reinforce that by putting some kind of foam. I'm going to put a little extra foam here that so that when this piece closes, it causes additional um, pressure on it and pushes the, um, gives it a little bit more push into this um, foam piece there that causes the, uh, the module to work. So there you guys have it. It's <laughs> easy fix, fixed it right, solved it. Um, and that's pretty much it. But that's what's inside of these pretty easy, um, I don't know the termino terminology guy, like I said, I'm not, I'm, I'm no whiz, but you see it's a fix. And I'm actually gonna do a video on how to do an actual G-Shock correction, how to fix the display. I've known people who've had this issue in the past where the display is not legible or it's only partially visible. And it's because of the same problem. This little piece there in G-Shocks is usually two of them. Um, and you have to carefully place those in that position, in those slots, to make sure they work. But I'll do a video on that to kind of help you guys in case you've had this issue. So close it back up. And before I before I before I actually um, put the screws back in, take another look on there. Yep, yep, we're good to go, guys. We fixed it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's entertaining. Hopefully a little how to. But I was actually excited. My idea, and I might still end up doing it, was to remove that component. Um, but and then you should replace this middle screen with the with the TV kind of sort of a tablet or something with the same size, and then put some digital images or video of G-Shock content, maybe even my YouTube videos, in the display and kind of use it as a backdrop. Wouldn't it look cool? I think it would look pretty cool. Um, kind of have this in the backdrop here and showing my videos as I do my cool YouTube videos. <laughs> but I think it's pretty neat. What you guys think? Should I keep it as is or should I actually tamper with it and try to do that? Um, I still don't know. Maybe give me some ideas. What do you think? Um, something that would fit here and then I could tap into it with maybe a USB drive or play off of Wi-Fi or something like that and then kind of stream videos onto this cool display. Wouldn't that look neat? I was actually considering doing it with that as well, um, right there, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna damage that. And since I have an extra one of these, um, see? Since I have an extra one of this, I thought maybe I, I, you know, I, I use it and then I'll, I could save the, the glass and save the components inside and I could always uh, revert back to its original design if I get bored or whatever the case. But I think it would be cool. I could actually sit the module or the um, digital thing inside of there and then kind of, like I said, um, stream or play back some videos or stream some images to kind of um, change. They've actually, I've, I've actually seen like maybe digital, um, t uh, what do they call it, photos or uh, photo albums or whatever they call them. Maybe something that will fit inside of here. And then I could probably um, pull the cable, the power cable from the back or drill a little hole, kind of pull the cable to give it power and then hang this up. And I could, I don't know, show some pictures of G-Shock watches or something. And I think it's pretty neat. What do you guys think? Give me some ideas. Tell me if it's worth the effort or just leave it as this, as designed um, as a wall clock. Um, I think it's pretty neat too. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. This is Chicago. Holla at your boy. I'm glad I got it fixed. Can't wait. Holla at your boy. I'm out here. Peace. I'm rocking my G-Shock. 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 I'm rocking my G-Shock.